Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here, and I am excited to bring you this video because I got a comment about a week ago from a subscriber asking me to combine both toggle buttons and bookmarks with the new sync sliders feature in Power BI. So I'm going to run through an example now that's based on the original model that I put together, and then we'll take a look at it, rebuild it, and see how it comes together at the end. So let's go on over to Power BI and take a look. Okay, so inside Power BI, I'm just gonna demo real quick where we left off with the toggle button before. It was pretty simple. The, uh, the toggle button here just has two images, an on and an off, and I'm holding down my control key while I'm clicking on the image to switch between a pre-saved bookmark that has a relative date filter and just a normal date uh, slicer attached to it. So what I did was I went over and I copied uh, duplicated a, that page and then added or changed really the the type of image that was displaying the saved bookmark and uh, and then attached a product category to it so the design here is that I can either look at bikes only or all products and right now it's red so it's all products if I control click on it it'll change to green and it's filtering just bikes and I can see that over here in my subcategory that it's either just bikes or it's everything like accessories, clothing, and so on. That particular toggle then is synced with the slicer here and a second page that uh, is doing a, a graphic or a visual that um, has a horizontal bar chart that's totaling the order quantity by color. And right now it's defaulting to all. If I go back to my product page and I click the uh, the toggle and switch it to bikes only and I go back to the color again you'll see it switched to color uh, the colors have changed here and so as the quantity if I go back to the page and change it to all products you'll see the NA value is back and it's all products again so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and destroy everything I'm going to get rid of it and then we'll rebuild the uh, the slicer back and the synchronization and all of those pieces together so let's go in uh, again, I'm going to go through and just remove uh, the images that I have here. One prerequisite to this is that you need to have the uh, preview feature for, I believe it is, the the bookmarks. So if I go to preview features here, make sure bookmarks is checked. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to use the bookmark, bookmarks feature that won't show up for you. So um, other thing I'm going to do is go to the view menu and we're going to enable the bookmarks pane, the selection pane, and the sync slicers. And they'll show up here on the right. If I expand them, they'll take up a bit of space. That's okay. We can, we can deal with it the way that it is. Uh, I'm going to go over and I am going to show the image that I created before. And uh, we'll delete that. I'll leave this text box there and uh, the slicer here. Uh, I'll just leave that the way that it is. Um, actually, I'll take it off. I'll take it off. We can get rid of it. Um, we'll go and we'll do the same thing with the color tab here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave this the way it is. I'm going to assume you can sort of set this up on your own. Uh, basically, you just need a visual that's going to display information that's different than the product tab here so we can actually see that it's working. In this case, I have products on one page and then I have a summary uh, by colors on another. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go over to the fields here. I'm just going to shrink these up. We'll go to fields and uh, I'm going to take the uh, product category itself and I'm going to just drop it onto the canvas here and then we're going to change this to a visualization that's a slicer and then we'll make it a drop down. So let's put that in there. That looks that looks decent. I'm going to leave it at all. And then the other piece we're going to do is uh, I have some pre-saved bookmarks here from when I was testing this out. So we'll go ahead and we'll delete those because I don't want those in here. Notice that the bookmarks that I created previously are there for the first page. So I don't want to mess with those right now. I want to leave those the way that they are. Then we'll go to the home menu and we'll uh, add the two images that I'm using as my button. So I have my green button here and it's going to come in pretty large. I'm going to go in and I'm going to change this uh, this to, uh, let's just see something that's reasonable. Yeah, 80 by 64 looks good. 
and we'll go back to the home menu and we'll add another image a red button this time that i have saved and uh, we're going to manually edit to make it 80 by 64 uh, just to guarantee that it's going to be the same size as the other button then what i'm going to do is i'm going to lay these out right next to each other so i can make sure when i start to add the functionality that they're working correctly uh, all right so those two things are in there uh, now we can start working on how I want to get the, the bookmarks to start functioning. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the selection uh, box here. And you'll notice that uh, right now for this page, and actually for the whole, for the whole uh, Power BI layout here, everything is uh, shown invisible right now. So what I want to do is when I have the green item visible, meaning bikes only, uh, I want to choose just bikes from this drop down list. And then when that happens, I want to hide the other image, which is this this particular image. So we'll hide that one. So my layout should look like look like this. That looks fine to me. And then um, what I want to do is I want to go and add a new bookmark. So we'll add a new bookmark and we're going to rename it and we'll call this uh, bikes only from that list. And this is very similar to the way that we did the toggle button before. This isn't hasn't really changed too much from what we did before. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is go back and I'm going to uh, show this show this other image, the red button, and I'm going to hide the green one, and then go down and uh, make all product categories be shown. And then we're going to preserve this state. So right now, when I click add, it's going to preserve the current state that it's in. And I'm going to rename this to all products. All right, so that's in there. And now I'm just going to click the two just to test and make sure that they're working correctly, the bookmark portion of it. That just handles the bookmark. Now I have to actually click on the image itself, go and format the image, and change the link property to on, and tell it that it's a bookmark, and then tell it what I want to bookmark. And it's actually the opposite of the current state that it's in. When I click the green button, I want it to show all products because it will currently be showing just the bikes. When we click the red image, if I were to go back and say uh, all products here and the red image is on, I turn the link on for that bookmarks, I want that to be bikes only because I want it to be flipping between those two settings there. So let's go back uh, and then let's just test it. So. I uh, click the red image, it goes to bikes only. Click the green image, it goes to all products. That looks good. All right, let's go ahead and um, turn both of them on here visually so I can lay the red button over the green one like that. And then again, we'll control click just to make sure it's working. It's green, it's bikes, it's red, it's all. That looks good. I'll line this up a little bit better. Okay, so that handles the bookmark. The bookmark's taken care of. I can go ahead and, and shrink those down. Now what I want to do is handle the way that the slicer is going to work. So for the slicer portion of it, uh, very similar to the video, we're just integrating it with the way that the bookmark works. Uh, by default, these would be unchecked, and I want to go ahead and check under the sync category, both syncing the slicer that's on the product page with the slicer that's on the color page. All right, so now if I go back between the two, uh, you'll see all is selected. If I switch it to just bikes and we go ahead and look at the color, it's just bikes. If I go back to the product page, uh, select all products and go back to the color, you'll see all products is chosen here. All right, so it's working, it's working the, the way that I would expect it to work. A couple of hints and tips about this that I ran into while I was demoing this and trying to build it out. Uh, I noticed that... Um, I went in and I tried to edit um, the previous bookmark. And uh, of course, the, these bookmarks are tied to that particular page. That's not very clear in here. You have to remember, especially if you get a lot of bookmarks, what the bookmarks are attached to and what they're actually doing. So that was uh, a downside. The other thing that I noticed when I duplicated this page and, uh, and brought it over there was uh, something interesting that was going on with the bookmarks here that when I when I clicked on a bookmark uh, from a duplicated page, 
uh, it's it preserved the original bookmark for the first page not the page that was duplicated uh, so it took me a second to figure out that that's what was going on so just a note on on how those uh, work. The other thing is um, I haven't figured out the naming convention yet. Maybe if you guys have figured it out and you put some comments in there about how it works, these names to me seem pretty generic and I haven't really figured out a way to give them a different name. I thought maybe the alt text that was down here would let me rename them. I thought I ran into a blog post somewhere, a comment that those names can be edited, but um, for right now I can't. So imagine if I had several different images, lots of different slicers, several text boxes, a couple cards. It would be hard to keep track of where these are without just testing, toggling them on and off to see where they are. Toggling them on and off from the selection pane isn't going to modify the bookmark. It's just going to give you the ability to view it or not. It doesn't have an impact on the bookmark at all until you either add a new one or another really neat feature about the bookmark is uh, when you click on it and say that you've made a change, and I messed this up the first time, uh, you don't have to delete the bookmark and add it. You can actually just hit the three dots, the ellipsis, and say uh, click update, and then it will update the bookmark with the current uh, preset settings for that particular view. All right, so that's how you take the toggle button feature combined with the bookmarks with the sync slicers, put them all into one and get a nice flowing layout and some transitions between the pages. As usual, hit me up with comments. Uh, please subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications and I'll be passing out some more wonderful content. Thanks.